Patrick Palladino, is there is the only thing we can do now a general strike? Seems nothing, nothing seems to work. Yeah, well, general strike is easier said than done. You know, you've got to get everybody wanting to go out. So it's massive organizing. I think that's the culmination of a process rather than where we start. Um, when people are ready to go on a general strike, it's like the last straw. They've had it. And you study the general strikes we've had in this country and other countries. And I'm not talking about the, you know, sort of formalized general strikes some of the European unions do. France does it a lot. Italy does it a lot. Where all the unions agree to take a day off and march and then they go back to work the next day. And, you know, so the bosses take a day off and then go back to work. It just, it doesn't have that big an impact. Um, but a general strike that's disruptive. You look at where it's happened. You know, I'm thinking now the Teamsters in Minneapolis, um, you know, they were mistreated and violence perpetuated on them by the police. And the city came out in support um, and went on strike with them. Uh, and that's the kind of thing you see in the, you know, the Seattle general strike, the San Francisco, Oakland general strike. Um, and, uh, you know, anywhere you look around the world, that's kind of how it develops. So that means we've got to, you know, work in our own uh, jobs, industries to develop the labor movement. And uh, if we're in a community or working through community organizations, you know, support the labor movement and uh, build a relationship with them. Um, but I think, you know, there, there are all kinds of tactics we should be using, you know, public education, um, internal education within our movements. I mean, we should be reading things together and talking about them, and, you know, taking turns presenting a summary of the reading to start discussion, which develops people as speakers. And, you know, we can give friendly criticism on how they can improve their presentation, doing things like that in our locals develops us as organizers and activists. Um, so there's education, public and internal. Um, and then just, you know, demonstrations, protests, public forums on an issue to advance that issue, like single parent health care. Um, but we have to realize that if that's all we do, the incumbents, generally the Democrats who are lobbying, most likely to maybe vote for that, can take us for granted if we aren't also running candidates that compete for those votes with progressive-minded people. So we got to employ all the tactics. And uh, I see a general strike as like we elect a we elect a progressive government, a green government, and it starts instituting reforms, and then the capitalists stop investing and uh, using the media to try to, you know make scandals out of nothing for the people that were elected and providing obstruction to the process of, you know, carrying forward the reforms. Um, and when they disinvest from the economy to wreck it and blame the reformers, that's the time for a general strike. And not just a strike, but maybe to take over the means of production directly and tell the bosses, you know, we really don't need you. You don't do any work. And we can hire our own management to coordinate things. I think that's when a general strike scenario that can, you know, in the traditional wobbly sense of IWW, the International Industrial Workers of the World, um, in their sense of how a general strike would transform society, I think uh, it's not the first step. It's kind of the culminating step in a, in a transfer of power from capitalist elites to working people.